What is crack a lacking? How are you guys doing? <clears throat> Kula, Aaron, Mike, what is up? Thank you for watching. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight. <clears throat> Uh, Nathan says I'm chiming in on the couch. How about you? <laughs> and Mike said that he is chilling on the boat. So that's awesome. How's it going, Jeremy? How you doing? Well, guys, I had a few things that I wanted to talk about tonight. Um, you guys, I've seen the thumbnail. Um, I have some metallic powders that I got in a kit and um, you know there my wife and I have kind of talked about a few possibilities but I'm really not sure about what I want to do with these but until then I want to say hello to everybody who's here this evening so Chris Samia Jeremy Mike Nathan Aaron Kula what is going on how are y'all doing how's the weather with everybody where you live? Where you live? Well, what's the weather like there? What's going on, Mike and Jordan? What's up? <clears throat> so, guys, uh, also I want to tell you we had a great time making uh, when Aaron and I went to Detroit, and uh, we got to uh, make that river table. It came out really, really cool. Um, there were a few hiccups here and there that I wanted to share with you guys that I wasn't able to last week because of the terrible live stream and I want to apologize for that. <clears throat> Jose, what's going on? Zombie Redeemed, hello. Jordan Woodworks, what's up? Slick Tables, let's go. What's going on, man? Hey, uh, Slick Tables, I saw some of the stuff that you posted recently. Great job. Things look really, really good. Fly RC now. Hey, Nate. <laughs> Says, hey, Nate, it's your friendly FedEx driver. What's going on, man? <clears throat> so anyway, guys, when we were making the river table in Detroit... Um, there were a few things that I wanted to touch base on that I didn't get a chance to last week. And um, we had a great time making that table. And actually, we got the, the form built, the table cut and sealed, and everything poured and taken out of the form in about two and a half days. So if you guys have everything in order, it can actually move relatively quickly. And also, if you um, the resin that we were using... Also, it, um, it it's not as a, it doesn't cure as slowly as stone coat countertops does. So, um, it, it actually, we were able to knock it out pretty quickly. So, um, speaking of that, we had a, a few hiccups here and there. Um, one, if you notice my stir stick, that was uh, my father-in-law made that because he didn't actually have a, a stir. <laughs> so, but actually worked really, really well. Um, so. One of the big issues that we had with the epoxy was over mixing. Now, I've never had this issue before, um, but it, it was something maybe I've missed in the past. And so, <laughs> uh, Sammy says the stir stick was cool. Thank you very much. And, and so, I didn't realize that it was actually something I should touch on, but you can actually over mix epoxy so I wanted to hit that up really quickly and that um, when you guys are mixing your epoxy make sure that your bucket is flat on the table and that you work your drill up and down from the bottom to the top but don't come out of the top of the epoxy because that it creates a lot of bubbles you can actually bring the stir just below the surface so it creates a funnel from the top down in and you'll have a lot less bubbles there the problem that we had with the table um, was that when my father-in-law was started to sand down the epoxy and he noticed that there was a lot of micro bubbles from the last pour and he actually um, he actually mixed it so much that it turned white like milk and that was too much so you can actually mix it for a, a long period of time without it 
and training a lot of air into it and that's the goal so <clears throat> if you guys have any questions feel free to shoot them up to me So, Philip Taylor, appreciate that. I'll have to check into that. <clears throat> hey, Rusty. <laughs> How's it going, man? Sorry, uh, we weren't, we didn't have enough time in Detroit. I would have liked to have been able to um, check out some of the places that you suggested. All right, Mark. Mark says one question. And what's your question, Mark? Um, so Jeremy Peace asked, uh, does stone coat epoxy have the same issue? Can you over mix it? Um, yes and no. So they're casting epoxy. Yes, you can over mix and, and train too much air, but their countertop epoxy. No, you can mix that till it's white. Um, as long as you continue to go over with a heat gun, you shouldn't have any problems with, um, cloudiness or anything like that. So this is the first time because I was using incredible solutions epoxy. Uh, that was an issue for us that even though we torched it and used a heat gun, we could not get all of the bubbles out before it started to thicken up. And that's the difference. So stone coat epoxy cures a lot slower. So, um, you're able to get, you have a longer working time to get the bubbles out. Um, Mark says, how did you come up with the figures for the amount of epoxy of 12 gallons on that river table? So, um, Mark, that's a great question. What I did was on the river table for the boat. <clears throat> I decided how wide and long that I want. I wanted my table. I decided those dimensions. And when I ripped the table down, folded the two sides in, what I did was I measured the widest point of the void where the river is. And I used that number as if that was the entire width of the river. And so I do that so that I don't, um, under calculate how much epoxy I need. So then what I did was I used that as my width, measured the length of the table, and measured the thickness of the table, and you multiply those together. Once you have that value, that would be, um, because I use inches, that would be cubic inches. And what you can do on Google is go to, um, type in Google, type in cubic inches to gallons calculator and you type those values in and Google will give it to you. Super easy. Uh, so Rusty says, what was the place you were, that you walked into to get the slabs by your father-in-law? So, um, <laughs> I have to get back to you on that one, Rusty. I, uh, I forgot the actual, the, the name of it. You'll have to go back into the video and see. Um, I'm, it was funny when I was recording that, I literally said the name of that place like eight times before I got it right. <laughs> uh, um, so Nathan McCarr says, did it go exothermic or did it just go white? Um, so it just went white because of all the bubbles and train in there. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, that was the problem. It just had too much air in there. And the problem was it started to thicken before the air bubbles could fully uh, come to the top and pop. So Philip Taylor says, no worries, bud. She gets it straight from Australia. No middleman. Okay, Philip. Uh, I really, really appreciate that, man. Um, Aaron says, I think that was my issue when I poured coaster molds. Yeah, that it. so far, um, stone coat countertops, their regular countertop epoxy doesn't have that issue but some other epoxies that maybe cure quicker do. So hopefully that ex answers some of your questions. Um, so Samia says, can I add live plants in the epoxy? Yes, you can. Um, the difficult part though is that because live plants have moisture in them, that moisture wants to try to escape when you um, pour your epoxy. So what I suggest would be to... Um, use some sort of sealer, maybe uh, dip them in like sanding sealer or something to seal them first before you pour it in there. Or you can pour multiple layers when you are casting a live plant. 
That way, the moisture has somewhere to go. Uh, Zombie Redeem says, just finished watching Stone Coat's Lava Table. So amazing. After watching you use it, I will use them for my first project. Yeah. So, so far, if you guys have been on my channel, um, Stone Coat Countertops Epoxy, especially their casting resin, is by far my favorite to date um, because it is a little bit less expensive than other casting epoxies, uh, but also it's very user friendly. Um, so you can cast up to three inches thick so far, and it, um, it actually works really, really well. Uh, Rusty Morgan says, yes, my bubble problem with Pro Marine was over mixing. Completely my fault. Pro Marine is a good product. Uh, Philip Taylor says, water from the plant will bleed out. That's true. It depends on how, how much moisture it has in it. Uh, Philip Taylor says, have you thought about getting a vacuum chamber and pump? Degassing will remove nearly all bubbles. Yes, I have thought about that. <laughs> um, so my question, though, for the vacuum chamber um, and, the, and the pump is, uh, so Philip, because maybe you have a little bit more experience than I do, um, I assume that you have a pressure pot to compress air bubbles so that you can't see them. When it comes to air bubbles, do you have to have a special epoxy to remove air from it? Just curious, because if your epoxy cures rather quickly, wouldn't the air bubbles get stuck midway um, during curing? Nathan McCarr says no. <laughs> no what? <laughs> Hey guys, uh, real quick, um, <laughs> Nathan says just no. <laughs> um, real quick, so I have these colors uh, from Black Diamond. Guys, if you have any ideas, what should I use these colors for? Um, I really have no idea because this one is uh, Tucson Sunset. It's really bright yellow. We also have Imperial Red, which doesn't look red. It looks like pink like a flamingo. And then we have uh, Vivid Orange, which is really vivid orange. <laughs> uh, so let me know, if you, post a comment, let me know what I should do with these. Uh, Samia says, also I just made a table, the epoxy shrink, did I mix it, the epoxy shrunk. Did I mix it wrong? It, it's almost time to cut it out of the mold. I'm afraid it will shatter or something. It was the Pro Marine countertop epoxy. So, um, yes, mo most epoxy does shrink, especially when you cast a thick uh, pour. It's called suck back. Um, and what happens is it, it gets really hot because of the exothermic reaction, and that can cause it. As long as it didn't crack, you should be okay. It probably won't crack coming out of the mold. Um, if it was going to crack, it would probably already have cracked. But that's not... 100% sure so guys I would just um, so Sammy I would just be careful when you take it out of the mold but you should be okay if it hasn't cracked yet Aaron uh, says for a fire scene for fire scene tell me what you mean Nathan says do I lava river table in a darker wood do a lava river table in darker wood okay so you so Nathan you would like a like a dark wood like black walnut or something with a bright color uh, epoxy I mean a bright colored uh, metallic powder so Philip says uh, for the shorter working time resin is mainly used for pressure pots okay thanks Philip appreciate that um, zombie Redeem says Lava River would be sick. The Pine Knot Shop said it's a classic. Any like um, tiki trays that aren't like super decorative, but you can. Yeah. Throw those out or something. That's a good idea. 
Um, so <clears throat> Nathan says dark walnut would look cool. And then Aaron says, yeah, the Michael colors I have. He said, yeah, lava, fire. Samia says, uh, make it fade. <laughs> that would be kind of cool to make it fade. Um, she's also said on a wall or a shelf. That would be cool too. So Samia, so like when you say wall or shelf, like do you mean like a river table shelf or um, and what kind of, what, what would you put on a wall? <laughs> the Pine Knot Shop says, I'm just thorough. <laughs> yeah, it definitely cured, that's for sure. So uh, Keith Hen Henry says, hi, I, I have a river table, river coffee table I just finished. It's for my, f it's for my first. How can I send it to you to get your feedback? Wood is mango with transparent red dye and resin. Uh, Keith, that's a great question. So if you have Facebook or Instagram, you can <clears throat> um, direct message me there at Goodview Woodworks. So that's my handle um, on both of those, Facebook and in Instagram at Goodview Woodworks. Mike Cawthon says, 80s flashback colors, exclamation mark. <laughs> they are. So Aaron says, what's up, Pine? Thanks for the info last week. Appreciate it. Yeah, guys, um, if you guys haven't seen uh, the Pine Knot Shop, that's where I was in Detroit. Uh, week before last, or last was it last week? Last weekend, uh, yeah, I guess it was weekend before last. But you guys, go ahead and check out. He has a YouTube channel as well. You can check him out, the Pine Knot Shop. He's got he has a few videos on there. That's my father-in-law. He's he's also a really a really good woodworker. Samia says, yeah, like a river table shelf or wall. It would look sick to have lava wall accent wall. Yeah, that would be really cool, wouldn't it? Nathan says he was thinking the same thing. <laughs> that would be really cool. So Slick Table says, I reckon black walnut with white resin looks wicked. Could be an idea. You know what? I totally have had the same uh, thought too. Um, I was thinking about doing black walnut with a um, a white pearl and maybe swirling the pearls. I really like it when the pearls swirl. <laughs> I'm a poet and didn't even know it. <clears throat> but yeah, that would be a really good idea. Mike Cawthon says, I had a pair of jams those colors. <laughs> jams? What's jams? Oh, hey, Pine Knot Shop. Thank you. So, um, Rusty, the name of the place was Homestead Hardwoods. Homestead Hardwood Company. So you can check them out. Uh, so, Rusty says, posted my Lichtenberg machine in action with a couple of coat racks I just finished on Instagram, at Rusty Merkin. Some people were wondering, wondering how my rip dye stain looks. Yeah, guys, go check out Rusty Merkin's stuff on Instagram. His uh, his stuff looks really cool too. Um, uh, so he um, during the first Cheapskate Challenge, he posted uh, the coat rack, and the one that he stained with Kool Aid and uh, did the uh, Lichtenberg bur burning and stuff. He was to me, he was one of the most creative. He he had one of the most creative entries. It's really cool. <laughs> Mike Cawthon says shorts. Uh, so Jeremy P says, why do slabs of wood cost so much? Ridiculous. Well, I would say it costs so much because, um, it's a lot of usable wood. If, I mean, um, I think because one that it's popular now, but also because, um, <clears throat> when, when they do dimensional lumber, you know, they could yield more lumber if they didn't, if they did not cut it into slabs. 
Mike, Mike Cawthon called me a young whippersnapper. <laughs> hey, I can't help it, man. <laughs> Sammy says, I know, right? <clears throat> All right, guys. Hey, I wanted to say as well while we're on here, uh, if you guys wanted to enter the Cheapskate Challenge, remember uh, the challenge is over on the 29th of this month at midnight. And uh, all you guys have to do is send me a picture of your entry to Instagram or Facebook, and uh, you will be entered to um, to win uh, a Goodview Woodworks T-shirt. Um, so, and remember, the rules to the challenge are: um, you have to make a woodworking epoxy project, but you can only use you have. There's a fifty dollar price cap. You can't use anything else, and you are free to use stuff that you already have at home. So, uh, Zombie Redeem says, do you have any other hobbies outside of woodworking? Yes. Um, I actually am a car guy. I really, in, I really like to, uh, I really like cars. I'm into cars. And so, um, I actually went to school at NASCAR Technical Institute to, as an automotive technician. So, um, sometimes I flip cars. Um, when I see a good deal online, I'll get a car and flip a car to make some extra cash on the side. Uh, Aaron says, because it's the in fad. That's right, Aaron. Aaron, you hit the nail on the head. Uh, Shyam says, good to see you. I just followed you on Instagram. I'm new to the Insta and Epoxy Medium. I have posted some new works. Please check them out and give me some feedback, especially the his new coffee tables. I for sure will do that. Thanks, man. Nathan says, Lol, what if the winner uh, keep LOL, what if the winner keeps entering the same thing every time? Please don't do that. <laughs> and Nathan, you should enter this time. You got plenty of time. Zombie says, very cool, super handy skill. Yeah, it's actually uh, come in handy quite a bit. Aaron says, I'm restoring a, a 69 El Camino. That is sweet. So are you going with uh, like just a regular body off restoration? Or are you doing any kind of performance? Uh, upgrades to the engine or anything like that? Let me know. Fred says, hey, just got home from work. What's up, Fred? How you doing? <laughs> so Christopher Hamilton says, hey, Rusty, can you make me a machine? I think he wants a Lichtenberg machine. So mocked up woodwork is from the OKC. Rusty says, didn't know you were a car guy too. Yes, I am. Um, Rusty, I've been working on a, a car for like over 10 years. I have a 1974 Volkswagen Super Beetle with a VR6 in the back, turbo. Um, so I've never driven it. I haven't had a chance to finish it yet, but maybe one day I'll get around to finish it, finishing it. Aaron says, engine was rebuilt when I bought it. Interior will be insane. That sounds awesome, Aaron. Uh, Rusty says, they're easy to build. I don't want to get involved with liability, or if it can kill you, they're dangerous. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good point, Rusty. <laughs> yeah, good point, man. Uh, Fred says, like my trucks more than cars. Uh, Nathan says, there's a huge spider on your wall. Where, where is it? Where do you see it? Uh, Craig says, I would like to try that. <clears throat> Sammy says, it's a solid epoxy. Is solid epoxy stable alone or does it need a live slab or wood frame under every time? Um, so no, once once epoxy is cured, it's it's all good by itself. It doesn't need anything inside of it. Eddie DeVito, <laughs> what's going on? 
Nathan says, LOL, I've been wanting to do that for so long. Oh, you're just messing with me. Fred says, I got a Roush Supercharged 2014 Raptor and a 56 F100 with a new 351 Windsor. Sweet. That sounds awesome. Rusty Murray says, two peas in a pod. 67 Beetle is my next build. That's what I learned to drive in. That's awesome. Hey, Rusty, I also have a 1975 Volkswagen bus uh, camper high top. And um, soon, within the next year, probably I'll be doing a full rebuild on all the cabinets and everything on the inside of the bus. So it'll be really nice. So Zombie says, uh, I like how you include family on some of your projects. I hope my daughter will create with me someday and have fun. So a hey, zombie uh, redeemed. I really appreciate that because um, I really enjoy having my father-in-law in on the videos and he really enjoys it too. He just lives really far away from me. So we can't do it as often as we'd like to. Um, but what's really cool is my wife has actually um, liked woodworking and things as well. And so I've taught her to use most of the uh, tools that I have in the shop and she goes in there and makes stuff as well, which is really, really cool. I, I enjoy having my family all working together with me on this. It's cool. Um, so Jeremy says, uh, what is the best wood th thickness for a river table? So that Jeremy is subjective. It's all on the looks really on what you want. I would suggest for like a coffee table, nothing too thick, but it's really up to your, it's up to the person who wants it and what they want it to look like. So, um, uh, my dining room table is uh, is five quarter, so that's not super thick, um, but it also has a skirt underneath. And uh, the other two big river tables that I've done, they are uh, two and a half inches, two to two and a half inches thick. So it's always up to you, really. Mike Cawthon says, 67 Bug was my first car, too. <laughs> that's cool. Uh, Rusty says... Uh, just finished a 99 Cherokee six inch long arm lift kit board the straight six to thir uh, 30 over. 30 thousandths over, man. That's awesome. And Mike says the 1500, baby, 1500 cc's. <laughs> Was it a single port or dual port? Do you remember? Uh, Rusty Murphy says, How many windows in that bus? Well, it's a bay window bus, so just a regular amount of windows. They didn't actually have a specific number of windows in the bay window. Only the split windows. Uh, Slick Table says, white marble river. Kind of like Stone Coat's marble tops, but in a river. What do you reckon will work well? The black diamond pearls didn't go well. Huh. Okay, so Slick Tables, uh, what uh, was your issue with the pearls? What happened? Uh, Fred says, so what's the next project in the works? Okay, uh, good, great question, Fred. So we, um, the next big project that I have, um, so we have a project, uh, uh, reached out, we are collaborating with a company. Uh, they wanted their conference table built by Goodview Woodworks. And so the next big project, we'll be making a big black walnut river conference table. So it'll be really nice with some steel legs. Mike Cawthon says Aaron's stuff is better than yours sometimes. <laughs> you. Oh. <laughs> My wife said, who's Aaron? <laughs> what do you, what, what stuff? I said that you uh, work, do woodworking stuff sometimes oh. too. Oh. And he says your stuff <laughs> is better than mine. <laughs> Um, Nathan McCarr said you should sell hats uh, so uh, Nathan I, I, if you're serious I appreciate that because uh, we're actually working on that now um, I, I like this style hat I don't know if you guys like this style this is a, actually total boat um, but we're thinking about making uh, getting some of these style hats up for sale so you guys can get them if you would like still in the works though Um, Slick Table says, when I added the black to get that marble effect, it just blended in with the silver whitish pearl. Um, okay. Uh, so did when? So let me get this straight. So when you added black, did you add a black pearl to the white pearl? Or did you add a black spray paint uh, to the whitish pearl? 
So Mike Cawthon says, I think Nathan should help me next. <laughs> uh, Nathan McCarr says, I, I will 1,000% buy one. All right, Nathan, I appreciate that, man. And Rusty Merkin says, I'd support you, bro. Hey, Rusty, that means a lot to me, man. I appreciate that, too. Uh, Mike Cawthon says, going to clear some teak here soon with some West systems. Hey, Mike, I did get your uh, text message. I'm sorry I didn't respond. I actually forgot to, I read it and then forgot to respond. So sorry, man. <laughs> didn't mean to do that to you. Um, but yeah, maybe we could get together and work on that together. Uh, Fred says, I could use a new hat. Mine is covered in dust from sanding. <laughs> That's funny. I actually, when, when I, I first got this hat out of the box, they sent it to me. Uh, I sanded it and I had dust all over it like the first day. <laughs> okay, so Slick Tables says, I used a black dye from a separate mix of resin. Okay, so uh, Slick Tables, um, hey man, so I think that was the issue was that it was a dye because that's kind of what dye is made to do is kind of um, mix in. And um, if I were if I were you, um, if you go back to one of my videos uh, where I made the uh, bowl, the dog bowl stand for Roxy, uh, that's you can see how I made the marble effect there. I used spray paint, uh, black spray paint to do that. So. Uh, Logan Niss says, hey man, what's your Instagram? So Logan, my boy Nathan McCarr just posted it up here in the comments. Uh, that's my that my Instagram handle right there. Mike Cawthon says, I have beer and food. And Aaron says, what kind of food? <laughs> Logan Niss says, thanks Nathan McCarr. <laughs> Rusty Murga says, in that case, I'll be there. <laughs> Um, slick table is awesome. Thanks. We'll do. Yeah, man. Check it out. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to uh, send me a direct message on Instagram as well. Um, I'll help you out as best I can, bud. Hey guys, if you get a chance, um, I noticed there's about 23 of you guys on here. Uh, do me a favor and hit the uh, hit that like button for me so that it posts my video up higher in the queue. Maybe we can get some more people into our community. And uh, cause you know, I don't, I don't even come close to knowing everything. There's a lot of people out there with a lot of information that we could all uh, benefit from. So do me a favor and hit that like button. Mike Cawthon says, sounds like I need to fire up the big smoker. <laughs> Heck yeah. <clears throat> sounds good to me. Aaron says, hopefully no more knuckleheads like two weeks ago. Hey, man, you're right on that. That was terrible. Russell Carpenter says, just liked it. Hey, Russ, thanks, man. <clears throat> Russell says, just smoked a chicken over a pineapple. Man, doesn't that sound good? <laughs> Aaron says it sounds real good. So guys, if you guys have any more questions, uh, feel free to post them up and um, I can answer them for you as best I can. Uh, so if you guys uh, are curious, I know I was talking about the big river table coming up soon, but um, if you guys like like it or not, <laughs> if you like it or not, um, Aaron and I are going to be continuing to work on our house and I'll continue to post some videos um, so maybe some shorter videos of us working on our home and just so you guys can see a few things. Another project we have coming up is we're going to be doing um, our, our home office because right now I'm sitting at my dining room table. I have my computer at the dining room table and uh, we need to get our office done so that we can uh, have, have this in there instead of at the dining room table. But um, what I'm going to be doing is we're going to be making a floating desk uh, you know, our Goodview Woodworks desk. 
and uh, I really wanted to do a big river style desk uh, with some really cool black walnut, but that's expensive as you guys know, And uh, but I want to get this project done quickly, so we're going to do something a little different. Um, honey, what's the style that, of that called? It's it's yeah, kind of like geometric. It's like a um, southwest style. So we're gonna do like more like a southwest geometric style with some uh, reclaimed wood and just a little bit of epoxy accent. So it's gonna look really cool, uh, and we'll, that'll be also be coming up uh, probably next um, before the big conference table. <clears throat> so. Uh, Logan says, just followed you on Instagram. I'm finishing up my epoxy river table. I'll DM you a picture when I'm done. Hey, Logan, I appreciate that. That sounds awesome. Jeremy says, doing some barbecue pulled pork Saturday for niece's graduation. Tell you what, I, li I love me some pulled pork. Um, Russell says, usually do drunk chicken. Just cut a pineapple down and stuff the chicken. Oh. Sounds great. Nice. Yeah. Sammy says, awesome, thanks for your help. Nope, not a problem at all. Aaron says, do you know of a decent place to get antique brass hardware? No, I do not. The only place that I I'm, that we know of is we have a, uh, a restore close to us, which is uh, from Habitat Humanity. And they have this place called Restore. We go in there a few times. They have some older brass things in there. You could check there if you have one close to where you live. Aaron says, hope you're going to smoke that butt, peace. <laughs> Jeremy says, Aaron, yes, sir. <laughs> hey, Roxy. Come here. All right, guys. So I really appreciate you all hanging out with me this evening. Thank you for asking questions. Thank you, thank you for just telling me how you guys are doing and commenting and just being a part of this community. Uh, so far, we have a really small, tight-knit community, and I really like it. Um, and it's really cool to talk to you guys every every Tuesday. You guys are awesome. Cool. I'll see you later. Um, and I have a few questions that I answer before I leave, um, but I'm gonna do. Let me answer those before I leave, real quick. And then uh, we'll get to finishing this video. But Jeremy says, can you, please, can you explain buying wood by the board foot? Yes. So uh, in the last video, I explained it a little bit. But people sell board foot, board something by the board foot. So usually lumber yards and places sell things by a board foot because it's about volume. And um, so what a board foot is, is 144 cubic inches. That's one board foot. So whatever your measurement is, so whether it's six inches wide, 10 feet long, two inches thick, whatever it is, convert everything to inches, multiply that together, and then divide by 144 and you will get a board foot. So for example, if you have a board six inches wide, two inches tall, 12 inches long, that is one board foot. So uh, Russell says, I got like four river table burl slabs just trying to decide what to use as a base before I make them. Russell, uh, I, I always like to incorporate different materials, so my thing would be steel. I really like steel or metal legs. <clears throat> um, Fred says, currently drinking beer, eating Doritos, and laying on my bed with this streaming to my TV. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome, Eric. I mean, Fred. Uh, Zombie says, live chat is so much better. Been watching recorded for a few weeks, and it's not the same. See you, see you all next week. Yeah, guys. Hey, Zombie, appreciate you watching and chiming in. You guys are awesome. I want to say thank you for supporting this channel. Thank you for everything you do. And uh, thanks for hanging out with us, guys. You guys have a good evening.